Good morning, everyone. Uh, this part of um, a YouTube lecture is on neurography. And neurography is nerve imaging, as you know, dedicated to nerves. So here I chose this section to uh, teach you all, uh, whether you're a practicing physician or radiologist or a resident, uh, how to process these images and uh, display the nerves as the, your clinicians would like to see in different planes. And uh, we'll basically just look at a few cases of brachial plexus, a lumbar plexus, and maybe an extremity knee MRI, and uh, look at how those nerves are processed and uh, displayed in different longitudinal views. Just like uh, you guys are used to looking at angiograms, we'll look at neurograms here and display the nerves. And uh, these are very helpful for the clinicians to identify where the nerve problem is along the length of the nerve, where the nerve is discontinuous or has a neuroma, uh, where the tumor is in the nerve, and then how the nerve is different from one side versus other, like Parsonage-Turner syndrome, where all the nerves are bright and thickened on one side as compared to the other. Um, so all of that stuff can be shown on these images. So I'm primarily using Terraricon for this, uh, but you can use any software, and I use multiple different softwares. Don't have any conflict of interest with any of these softwares, but I'll just show you on Terraricon today. So we'll start with the brachial plexus and then we'll move to maybe lumbar plexus and a knee and show you in the next 15 minutes how to do all this processing. And we're only focusing on anatomic images. I'm not showing you the DTI processing because that I could show you in a separate lecture. So let's keep it short, sweet and to the point. Okay, let's go to the brachial plexus. So once we load the brachial plexus images, these are uh, displayed in all three planes and a volume rendered image. And you can see these nerves there, kind of hard to see through this thick neck, short neck, but these all these bright structures are the nerves. Now, how do we display it for the clinician? Well, uh, most of the times in brachial plexus or lumbar plexus, they use the coronal images and these are oblique coronal. So here I've oriented, you can always change the orientations by moving your cursors. You want to make sure that the nerves are symmetric. So on the axial plane, rotate it. So the nerves are kind of symmetric. Here they are. And then you can go to MIP. And you can change the, um, the MIP processing, how thick you want to make it. And basically, the nerves are coming out obliquely in this plane. That's how I have oriented. So now you start to see these nerves. And as I scroll through them and magnify them, you'll see more of these. So all these bright structures, I can change the window a little bit. All these bright structures as I scroll, you'll see these little perineural cysts coming out of the nerves. This is the spinal cord in the back, and these are the nerves getting out. And you can see as they course through the axilla um, into the upper arm, you can see on both sides. Now it's a little bit angled, so both of them are not seen exactly in the same plane. So we'll angle just a little bit to kind of straighten them like here. Now this is a short thick neck, so that kind of can give problems to see everything together. But you can make a thicker MIP to see it. Now, <clears throat> if you look at individual nerve roots, I can make it thicker to show all of them, but I want to show you individual nerve roots first. So the thinner nerve, these are the C5 nerves. These are C6 nerves, and they should be fairly symmetrical. Sometimes they bifid like this. This is C7 nerve, C8, T1, um, T1, T2. How do you distinguish the nerves? Well, the easier thing is you can actually go back and uh, see which nerve is straighter nerve. So that straighter nerve is usually the T1 nerve, and the nerve which comes out at an angle is usually a C8 nerve, okay? So let's count them again. So the thinner nerve is usually C5, C6, C7, and then C8 and T1. Now it looks like this one is coming at an angle, so you may be wrong. So what you have to do is, you have to go back and count the vertebrae also. Usually the nerve comes out on top of the vertebra. So you have to go back to MPR, which is this. And then this is C2 vertebra. So the nerve which is gonna come above C2 will be the C2 nerve, or the nerve which is gonna come above C3 will be the C3 nerve. So this is C3, four, and this is C5. So now if I go back, you can see this is gonna be the C5 nerve. So now if I go to the MIP, this is your C5 nerve. So in fact, the one we are looking at is C4. So you can be wrong or I can be wrong in counting if you're not following um, the nerve courses and you're not following the vertebrae. So this is in fact the C5 nerve. Now if you count it, this is five, six, seven, eight, 
and then if you look at one, one comes straight. So one usually comes straight, and I'll show you the same thing in lumbar plexus. The C8 comes at an angle, and one comes straight. So this is C8 and T1 nerves. Now, not only that, you can also see tiny branches. So now we know that this is C5, this is C4, and from C3, C4, we'll have a nerve which goes in this direction, and that nerve will be your spinal accessory nerve. And then there are nerves which are going below also, like this nerve, another one posterior nerve going out. So that's going to be one of the posterior nerves going towards rhomboids and all that. And then you can have this nerve which goes straight across. That's your suprascapular nerve. So you can see the suprascapular nerve going through. And then this nerve which goes across like that, that's going to be the axillary nerve. So this is your axillary nerve. So that's how you can see these different nerves. And these nerves are your radial, median, and ulnar nerves, and you can see them on the sagittal plane. So now we have seen this, we'll make a thicker MIP of that. So, so yes. now I have made a thicker MIP, and now you can see these middle portions of the nerves also. So you can see the C5 and C6 come together and they form the upper trunk. And then C7 comes and forms a middle trunk. And then the C8 and T1 will come together and form the lower trunk. So now we have upper, middle, and lower trunks. And these go and go into the arm, showing all these different branches. So you can see all of them. The key is to get a good fat set in the area and homogeneous fat set so you can compare one nerve versus the other. And we can get that even in these thicker patients if you keep your shim box right here in a smaller area. And you can see these nerves. So now we want to see what these individual nerves are. So in order to see that, First, you can start with axials. So here are the nerves coming out from the brachial plexus. You can see all of them going through the neck into the arm. So these are all the nerves getting out on both sides. And there they get into the arm, right? Right there. And you can look at the symmetry of the nerves, see if there's any thickening of the nerves, any parsonage turn, anything going on. These are the intercostal nerves getting out. You can see all these nerves. And then, you can go on the sagittals. So let's go on this one. So let's go to the right side. So here you can turn it. So these are isotropic images. And now you can see the sagittal images coming up. And go here. And now if you bring it, this is sort of an oblique coronal. Uh, again, showing the nerves getting out. So usually the nerve which gets out this way and goes lateral is the radial nerve. And the median and the nerves stay together. So that's how you'll see which nerves these are. But in order to see more of that, you can come here, go right along that, and then these are your nerves getting out. And now you go on the sagittal plane, which is this one, and I can bring it here so you can see it better, and zoom it, and then try to follow these. So now you can see all these nerves coming out, all of these. So again, the nerve which comes at an angle is C8, T1, 7, 6, 5, 4. And then you have upper trunk, middle trunk. This is forming the lower trunk. So these are the three trunks. Then they divide into different divisions, right? And then they go into the arm like that. And this is the posterior one is usually the radial nerve. And these are medial nerves, which are more anterior. And usually there's a specific pattern they are arranged. So if I go back here, and I just go to MPR right here and I reset it. So we have more of the straight planes here. And I do this a little bit. So now if I magnify that on the base images. So this is where the nerves are. I'm gonna magnify that. And now if you follow this back, here are your different segments, five, six, seven, eight, one. So as you come down, you can see this will form your upper trunk, this middle trunk, this will form lower trunk. Now as you go down, these are going to be the divisions. We are losing some signal because it's such a thick neck. So these are anti-posterior divisions, upper trunk, middle trunk, lower. And they are abnormal. They actually quite uh, conspicuously shine out at you, meaning very easy to see when they are abnormal. So now you come at the subclavian artery and these are the three chords basically. It's arranged as lateral, posterior and medial chords. 
The lateral cord will form the median nerve, the posterior cord will form the radial nerve, and medial cord will form the ulnar nerve. So in fact, when you get to these nerves, then you know which nerve is that. So medial nerve in the back and radial is, uh, sorry, median is here and the ulnar and the radial are there. So that's how you can identify which nerve it is. And you can also follow individual nerves. So here's an axillary nerve going back. So you can see this nerve, follow that back. That's the axillary nerve. It'll come here. It'll come right there. And this will go into the upper trunk right here. You'll just dive into that. And if you have to follow the suprascapular nerve, you can follow from here. So this is spinal glenoid notch. And one is vessel, one is nerve, and when the nerve is abnormal, it really shines out. Basically, just follow that straight structure. That's going to be the nerve going into the suprascapular fossa, going all the way, and it's going to follow in the upper trunk right there. So that's how um, you're going to find the stuff, the different nerves. And uh, the um, musculocutaneous nerve will be between coracobrachialis and short of biceps. So again, we can see them on the 2D images because these are more of the 3D images to suppress veins and everything. On the 2D images, you can see that better sometimes. But this is the plane you'll find the musculocutaneous nerve coming up and down. So um, this is how we'll do the brachial plexus. Now, in the next section, we'll move to the lumbar plexus. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the lumbar plexus. So again, we get the three planes, the axial, the coronal, and the sagittal. And as I described in the brachial plexus, it's the coronal plane, which is going to be quite useful because all these nerves come at an angle. They go like this into the legs. So it's better to angle them in sagittal like that and see it in the coronal plane. So we'll first go in the sagittal plane like that along the thecal sac. And now this patient has a scoliosis. So I intentionally didn't choose just a young patient with a normal spine. I wanted to see the regular case, run of the mill, you know, what we experience with these cases. So what we have to do is orient it a little bit. That way it corrects for the scoliosis. And now we have to scroll it to get to the thecal sac, but I can make a little MIP so it's faster scrolling. So and then I use the scroll button. And here you get to see all these nerves. You guys see that? So basically, this, you can change the window a little bit so it's not too shiny. Okay, so this is the sacral nerves. So this is S1, S... Um, so let's start here. So this is the S1, and then you have S2, then you have S3, and S4 are in the midline. So these are the sacral nerves. Now you have the L5 nerve. So again, L5 is at an angle while sacral nerves are straight. This is L4, L3, L2, L1, like that. So you can see all these nerves. And if you make a thicker MIP, you can see the longer extent of that. Now you also start to see these little nerves. So this is a subcostal nerve right here. This is a iliohypogastric nerve right there. So you can see all these tiny nerves as they get out. And sometimes with endometriosis, hernia, etc., they get entrapped. Or prior hernia surgeries, they get entrapped. So patients who come with abdominal chest wall pain, you can see these nerves being abnormal. So once we look at the plexus, next thing we do is we're going to turn it about 40 degrees or so. And one of my colleague, Dr. Cho, actually wrote a paper on this. And she showed the actual angles where these nerves are seen better. So here now you can see the femoral nerves on both sides. So basically this is a preganglionic segment, the ganglion and the nerve going all the way, going into the thigh. So you can see the femoral nerves. Next thing you can do is, you can come here. So again, the reconstruction thicknesses based, are based on how much fat suppression you have. If you have good fat suppression like this, you can make thicker reconstructions. If you have less fat suppression, you can make thinner reconstructions. Basically, it's variable. So I couldn't give you a particular number. So here we are looking for the sciatic nerves and these are the sciatic nerves which are hidden behind these vessels. So you can have to make a little thinner reconstruction but you will see these nerves very nicely. They're split nerves, if there's a muscle going through, if it's inflamed by uh, some compression or piriformis syndrome uh, any or any nerve injuries from hip replacement or whatnot, you can see it all on this pretty easy. And then we can go here to more like towards obturator foramina. And now we are looking for the obturator nerves. So here is the obturator nerve coming down. So this is kind of a control nerve for these plexuses. They should be nice and dark. 
and these are obturator nerves. If this plexopathy, they start to lighten, lighten up. So here are the obturator nerves. And you can see other nerves. So like this is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. So you can see all these tiny nerves. Because they're normal, they are harder to see. But this is the LFCN coming down. Pretty easy to see. So these are all the plexus nerves for you in the nutshell. And then okay, so now we are into the extremities. And uh, let's look at a knee MRN. We are looking at the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve. So this is how it's acquired in three planes. This is a 3D Pacif image. And uh, in this, now we want to look at the nerves. So we'll go to the nerve area, which is going to be about that. And then we can bring it here. We can angle it a little bit this way. So it's kind of comes isotropic. And now if you look at the nerves, I can actually change the windowing a little bit so it appears better. And then we can just scroll it and you can see these are the nerves coming out. So this is the common peroneal nerve, the tibial nerve, these are the sural cutaneous nerves coming out. This is the tibial and the common peroneal as they come out. Now this is scanned on a 1.5 Tesla scanner so it's a little bit blurry. If you do on a 3T it will even be a sharper image. We can go to MIP image now which is this and now you can see the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve how nicely you see them in the coronal plane. And you can always go back, orient along that nerve right here and you can see that on the sagittal plane. So here's a nerve coming out, that's your tibial nerve. And as you scroll it, you'll see it passing beneath these muscles going down. And you can make an MPR there with a thinner image and look at it more of the extent of the nerve. So here's a nerve going down. And this is sort of the control nerve for the knee and it's nice and gray. It's not bright. And now we can go to common peroneal nerve and go, come here and look at that nerve. And then there is that nerve going and it's going to go in that direction. We can orient it this way. So you got to acquire these images in uh, isotropic planes like 0.9 or 0.8 millimeter isotropic and then you can see the whole nerve there. And if it's abnormal, that will be thickened or bright or may have a tumor like perineurioma or nerve injury and things like that. So this is basically the neurography of the knee. So in a nutshell, we basically looked at the lumbar plexus, we looked at the brachial plexus and the knee neurography. Uh, in another lecture, I'll show you the facial neurography and we'll look at some 3D processing of the joints, uh, not only on CT but also on MRI, where you can not only measure the labral meniscal tears, you can also see them pretty nicely um, as compared to 2D images without any partial voluming, any overlap, and that's kind of the state of the art. Thank you.